Shashwin for the wonderful Mangalacharan recital and reading the text. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Danvat Pranam. Please Hare accept Krishna. our humble obeisances, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Danvat Pranam from everybody in this group, Prabhuji, who have joined and are about Hare. to join, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Good to see you after a long time, Prabhuji. Yeah, um, I hear you in London. You're in London, right? I remember. Yes, reading the with message. this atmosphere, yes. <laughs> cupboards give it away. The, 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 the London cupboards. <laughs> yes, it's the London bedroom cupboards. When are you, no library. When are you, how long are you here for? Uh, Prabhuji, for a month. Oh, great. Okay, so you're still here. And you're going to Belgium? You're going to go? To... No, I'm going to Cambridge, Prabhuji, now, uh, okay. next week. So I'll be there for a week. You'll be there for one week. Okay. After Great. that, uh, I'll I'll have I'll be on leave as well. So 
I'll have more time. Right now, I'm working from oh, home. You're working, okay. I'm working in Eldoret. My oh, leave from starts home. from okay. uh, Friday evening, so okay. I'm still working. You're still, and then you're going to Cambridge, okay? Yes, I'm going to Cambridge for a week, and then I'll be free. Okay, so let's meet maybe at the manor when you are when you're back from Cambridge. It'll be nice. Yes, yes, Prabhuji. Yeah, I think yeah. we uh, that would be good. Thank you, Prabhuji. Great, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, so, Prabhuji, we have been reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 1, Chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2 is called The Divinity and Divine Service. And the text for today is text 32, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, before you came, we did the Mangla Charan and we did, yeah. read the text once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now we can hand over to you, Prabhuji. Okay, thank you. Um, Hare Krishna, everyone. Nice to be with all of you. Um, uh, hopefully we have more of you uh, during as the session carries on yes. um, it's really nice to to be back uh, with the devotees um, the elder group um, I, uh, I just went to India so it was nice to go um, and now we're back and so we can be with you all again um, so thank you very much um, so we're reading text uh, text number 32 of chapter 2 of the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, and let's read the, so Sashwin read the Sanskrit, so I'll just read the translation and the purport, and then maybe we can have a little discussion. Uh, translation, the Lord as super soul pervades all things, just as fire permeates wood. And so he appears to be of many varieties though he is the absolute one without a second purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shila Prabhupada, ki jai mm. lord vasudev the supreme personality of godhead by one of his plenary parts expands himself all over the material world and his existence can be perceived even within the atomic energy Matter, antimatter, proton, neutron, etc., are all different effects of the Paramatma feature of the Lord. As from wood, fire can be manifested, or as butter can be churned out of milk, so also the presence of the Lord as Paramatma can be felt by the process of legitimate hearing and chanting of the transcendental subjects, which are especially treated in the Vedic literatures like Upanishads and Vedanta. Srimad Bhagavatam is the bona fide explanation of these Vedic literatures. The Lord can be realized through the oral reception of the transcendental message, and that is the only way to experience the transcendental subject. As fire is kindled from wood by another fire, the divine consciousness of man can similarly be kindled by another divine grace. His divine grace, the spiritual master, can kindle the spiritual fire from the wood-like living entity by impart imparting proper spiritual messages injected through the receptive ear. Therefore, one is required to approach the proper spiritual master with receptive ears only, and thus divine existence is gradually realized. The difference between animality, animality and humanity lies in this process only. A human being can hear properly, whereas an animal cannot. Namaste, Saraswati, Gaudavani, Pracharya, Nirvishesha, Sunyavadi, Paschatya, Shatadi. So the translation again. Sora Prabhu, if you could kindly go on mute, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Um, so the translation again. The Lord as super soul pervades all things, just as fire permeates wood. And so he appears to be of many varieties, though he is the absolute one without a second. So what we see here... Um, uh, Sutta Goswami is explaining to the sages in Nemisharanya uh, many different topics that he heard while he um, was on the bank of the Ganga with Maharaj Parikshit and Sukadev Goswami. 
So the the purport here, Srila Prabhupada is explaining the importance of hearing. Um, approach the proper spiritual master with receptive ears only, and thus divine existence is gradually realized. So it's so important to hear properly. The mood in which we hear is the mood is is the is directly going to impact the way Krishna enters our life. So it's in which mood are we going to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam? In which mood are we going to hear from the advanced devotees? In which mood are we going to hear where we need to be corrected? In which mood are we going to hear when a devotee tells us something and we understand that somehow or the other, Krishna wants me to hear this. So somehow or the other, somehow or the other, our intention in hearing is going to impact how Krishna impacts our life. It's up to us how we hear. It's up, that, that is up to us. So sometimes it's like, it's like we, we can travel all, thousands of miles. Oh, such and such Maharaj is going to give um, a retreat and he's going to do a one-week seminar on such and such topic. So we get, on, we get on the plane, we travel, we get there, we go to India or Kenya or London or America, wherever the Maharaj is, we want to go. And then we go there to here, but then we're too tired. Or then actually, oh, you know, um, we don't even make it to the class, even though we traveled th thousands of miles sometimes to get somewhere to actually hear. But then it ends up becoming a holiday rather than uh, a, a real uh, process of connecting with Krishna through hearing. Why does this happen? Because Maya is very subtle. See, ma when we become a devotee, at the beginning, Maya attacks us in very gross ways. Um, so the Maya will tempt us with meat eating, gambling, illicit sex, um, and I forget the other one, intoxication. So Maya will, um, Maya will tempt us with these things. But then after some time, after a little bit of time, these things we're not so interested in. We're not interested in um, intoxication. It just seems like, oh, what's the point? Gambling, meat eating. Can you imagine eating meat after becoming a devotee? It just seems like the worst thing we could do. You know, um, uh, illicit sex, all these things, they just seem so irrelevant. They just seem so uh, unnecessary. So what Maya does, Maya then realizes, okay, look, we need to, the Maya, Maya, Maya is thinking, Maya Devi is the servant of Krishna, thinking, okay, we need to test this devotee in a different way. So then the tests become more and more subtle. And Maya will try and attack this way, that way, this way. And when we say subtle, what does subtle mean? Subtle means that at the beginning, we do not realize that we are being attacked. We do not realize that there's anything wrong. And only after some time, only after some time, we begin to realize that, oh my God, I'm going off track. And we don't realize at the beginning. We just don't get it. Because Maya is very subtle. So what could happen is, for a few days, we start waking up late. And we're thinking, okay, it's day one, it's day two. It's day three. It's okay. And this has happened to me. See, I, Saturday. Where are we today? Today's Tuesday. Today's the third day in a row. I haven't woken up um, for Brahma Murta charting. I think today's the third day. Sunday? Monday, Monday, little early, Tuesday, today, no. So, so what, we, what, what happens is otherwise we're waking up early, we go, you know, we, we, we chant our rounds early in the morning, we get to day one, day two, day three, and I was thinking to myself today, how subtle, the first day I was thinking actually, you know, I'm actually very tired, and we moved to a new flat that day, so I was thinking it's a new place, I'm very tired. Um, sec and the clocks went forward on Sunday morning. So I think, okay, that's Sunday morning. You know, everything, I had enough reasons to forgive myself. Then Sunday night, we slept very late. So now it's Monday. So then it's Monday, and then, and then Monday morning. And this morning, I don't know what reason I gave myself. 
my uh, um, I looked at the clock at four in the morning. I closed my eyes, and then it was six. Like like that. Boom! How did that happen? So, so th this has happened now three days in a row, and I'm and I'm and I'm and I was thinking to myself, this, this is the subtle trick of my. Actually, I'm beginning to think, I'm forgetting how nice, am I, am I on, is my connection okay? You can hear me? Prabhuji, we lost you for a minute. Uh, okay. You were explaining about the subtle way of Maya, okay. and then we lost you for two seconds. Okay, fine. Well, it's okay now, no? Now it's okay, Prabhuji. Okay. Yeah, because I just saw the message which said your, my connection is unstable. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, so this 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 is the trick. This is the the trick. Maya will try and convince us that actually we're doing okay. And because we think we're doing okay, we think we're doing okay when we have let ourselves slip even a little bit for one or two days or three days. Then what starts to happen is this can become a new lifestyle. This can become the new me. And that's not a good new me. This is a going backwards new me. And this, this is the trick of Maya. Maya is very, very good at being subtle. Because if Maya came to me and said, Kanchanabja, do not wake up early the whole week, I would say, Maya, I'm not doing that. So what Maya does is Maya makes me think it's okay. Oh, you're tired. You need to sleep. Your back's hurting. This, you got a new flat. The clocks went forward. Millions of excuses. And then, then what will happen? Then what will happen? It just becomes normality. This just becomes normal. So what Prabhupada's explaining in the purple is that we must hear. And Prabhupada says that, um, that we should hear spiritual messages through the receptive ear. Therefore, one is required to approach the proper spiritual master with receptive ears only. He's saying again in one sentence and then the next sentence, be receptive. What does this mean? That if the spiritual master or an advanced devotee tells us, wake up early and chant the holy name, do not give excuses and be receptive. Because then we can have so, oh Maharaj, I'm trying, you know, but this, my back, my this, my family, this, that. But be receptive. And the more we are receptive, and the more we say no to Maya, the more we are saying yes to Krishna. And actually, in this world, in the 21st century, we have got so much, um, <laughs> we've got so much, um, promotion of self-care. Don't we hear this now? Are we Definitely in the West. I don't know how much it's happening in Kenya, but in the West, it's like self-care, look after yourself, well-being, headspace, mental, uh, mental health, look after your mental health. It's, it's such a big thing. Is it promoted so much in, in Kenya, Mataji? Not so much. Thankfully not. <laughs> Thankfully not. not. Not yet, not yet. Here in the West, it's such a big thing. And actually, actually, the best self-care, the best self-care is to wake up early in the morning and put the hand in the bead bag and chant Hare Krishna. That's the best thing we can do for self-care. Because, and if we can wake up early to chant Hare Krishna and put our hand in the bead bag and sincerely try and connect with Krishna, this is self-care at the highest level. This is real self-care. Um, so if we really want to care for ourselves, this is what we should do. Early, why early? What's the whole thing about early? Why early? Because after a certain time, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 7 o'clock even, after around, well, they say, the, well, the Brahma Muta time is the 96 minutes before sunrise. So it just depends where you live. So that's the most auspicious time. But generally in an, in, in, in an ISKCON temple, we're looking to chant our rounds generally between 5.30 and 7 o'clock. I think that's the, um, chant most of our rounds at that time. And then maybe we'll have, we'd have done a few before or we'll do a few later. But that's when we're generally looking to chant our rounds. Now, now, 
Why? Because after that time, the world, the mode of passion kicks in more. And because the mode of passion kicks in, the mind becomes agitated and the mind wants to do activity. The mind is starting to think, let me send that email, let me send this email, let me message this person, that person, call him, call her. But at four o'clock, five o'clock, five thirty, the mind is the mind is quite peaceful. It knows, well, there's no point messaging now because no one's going to reply at this time anyway. The mind is quite peaceful and settled, ready to chant the holy name. The mind is naturally situated in the mode of goodness. So therefore, when we chant the holy name in the mode of goodness hours then naturally what happens is we can connect to Krishna better. So if we really want to abide by um, self-care, we chant early in the morning. If we really want to abide by um, simple living, high thinking, to, to, to really keep our simplicity, we should chant Hare Krishna early in the morning. How does this keep us simple? Because isn't it complicated to chant 16 rounds during the day? Like, because we have so many other things to do. So like if you're working or if you're looking after children or whatever we've got going on in our life, it's quite a complicated affair to get 16 rounds done during that day. But if we want to keep our lives simple, we just chant before everything starts in the morning. So in that way, we're actually doing simple living, high thinking. How is that high thinking? Because then in our spare time, our free time during the day, we can read Srimad Bhagavatam. We can read the Bhagavad Gita. And, and we don't have to um, think, oh, I've still got 14 rounds left, Prabhu. I've still got 11 rounds left, Prabhu. Uh, it was the time now. So in, in Kenya, it's now 8.20. And some of us might be thinking, I need to leave the call because I still have seven rounds left. or I still have five rounds left. So if we, if, we, if we chant our rounds nice early in the morning, then the rest of the day, we are more receptive, like Prabhupada saying here, to be receptive, we are more receptive to hearing. We'll make that time for hearing without feeling I need to go and finish my rounds. And also generally what happens during the day, we're so distracted, we are more likely to chant with our phone near us, we're more likely to do talking japa, or driving japa, um, chit chat japa there's so many different types of japa snick snick ram ram snick snick ram ram japa so many different types <laughs> speed japa you know but actually if we wake up nice and early then we can chant Hare Krishna and, and by all means as I've just admitted <laughs> I'm not preaching to all of you, I'm preaching to myself. This is day three, bad day three, third day in a row. So I'm hoping tomorrow, I'm hoping by speaking this today, Krishna will purify me and wake me up early tomorrow. <laughs> um, because there's nothing better, there's nothing better than to connect with the Lord at that time. Early to bed, early to rise makes one healthy and wise. So if we want to be if we want to be spiritually wise, we, um, we connect with Krishna at the right time. And, and here, again, I, I really, I mean, there's so many wonderful things, um, so many wonderful things in this purple. Um, but here, Krishna, uh, Prabhupada is saying, the Lord can be realized through the oral reception of the transcendental message. And that is the only way to experience the transcendental subject. So we can realize Krishna. Again, he's using the word reception, oral reception. So Prabhupada is making it very clear in this purport that about our receptivity. So what else is it about receptivity? When we are, when we are chanting the holy name, sometimes we are in achiever mode. We want to achieve something. For example, I want to achieve attentive chanting. I want to achieve good hearing. I want to achieve um, Radha Krishna. We, we, we have this. Why? Because in the material world, we are forced to achieve. We, we are programmed from a young age to achieve good, good results at school, a good job, a good uh, spouse, have a good family, have good children. And these are all part of our achievements. And what happens when we come to spiritual life, we bring our conditionings with us and start feeling we need to achieve Krishna. 
We need to achieve Krishna Prem. We need to achieve Goloka Vrindavan at the end of our life. But spiritual life isn't about becoming the achiever. Spiritual life is about becoming the receiver. Not the achiever, the receiver. And what is the difference? The difference is when I'm chanting, I don't want to achieve Krishna. I want to receive Krishna. So what I want to do is just open up my heart and allow Krishna in my heart. I want to receive Krishna. When I'm reading Srimad Bhagavatam, I don't want to achieve um, knowledge of Krishna. I want to receive Krishna through the knowledge. When I'm associating with devotees, I want to receive Krishna through the devotees. And if we are ready to receive, we'll understand there's nothing to achieve. In this material world, it's all about receiving Krishna and, 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 and having the, the, the fertile ground so that Krishna can be received. We want to receive Krishna with our open heart, with a full heart and an open heart. So it's up to us. Spiritual life is up to us, but do we want to receive Krishna? Do we want to receive the mercy that Krishna is giving us? It's like, it's like when we take prasadam, the, 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 ways, the, the reason why when we are first brand new in Krishna consciousness, the reason we make a lot of advancement is because we take prasadam and appreciate it so much. And because we are appreciating, oh, because the, the food just tastes different, doesn't it? Prashadam just tastes different. So it's like, oh, wow, mm, oh, this is so nice. Mm, prashadam, mm, oh, Krishna, oh, wow, how into the temple, I'm eating this prashadam. Mm -hmm. So what is it about the prashadam? It's the fact that we're taking the prashadam with so much gratitude and the fact we're ready to receive Krishna with so much gratitude that we make a lot of advancement. We make a lot of advancement in our Krishna consciousness just purely through taking prashadam. It's amazing. But because we, achieve, we, 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 we receive the prasadam in such a grateful, grateful manner, when we, when we get too familiar with the concept of prasadam, we start to say, this is good prasadam, this is bad prasadam, this is nice prasadam, this is not nice prasadam. You know, we start, we start analyzing in, in such ways. And then we, don't, we lose that concept of being grateful. Because familiarity breeds contempt. So whenever something's happening over and over again, we can become familiar. Um, um, many pujaris speak like this when, when, they, when they're on the altar, that they can become familiar with the deities. Uh, personal servants of the spiritual masters um, will, will also tell us about how becoming familiar with the spiritual master um, is dangerous. So familiarity is dangerous. And this is this is a, and this is something we're also doing with our hearing, because of familiarity, we are sometimes not so receptive to what we hear. Sometimes we just like to hear a speaker because they're funny, you know, they crack a few jokes, uh, they make us laugh, and that's why we like to hear them. Which is still nice. It's still nice to hear speakers that can, that crack a few jokes. It's 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 necessary. But are we receptive to the message? Or are we just going to have a to be in a comedy show, you know? Because then you could just book tickets for a comedy show. But actually, yes, it's nice to hear speakers who make us laugh and are jolly and jokey. But do we are we receptive to the message? So the message is to be receptive, receive Krishna, be receptive. And if we are receptive, if we are receiving Krishna in our hearts, then what happens when we are reading Srimad Bhagavatam, when we are discussing Srimad Bhagavatam, what happens? Krishna comes and we can receive him. How does Krishna come? He comes in many different ways. Generally, Krishna comes because we, are, we can see, whoa, that must have been Krishna. You know, something happens today or tomorrow something happens you know you're trying i, I saw this nice um video of eldoret uh, kirtika mataji sent the other day um so one day 
the devotees in elder will be like, whoa, that was Krishna, because someone is going to come with the big donation, and whoa, that must have been Krishna, because because that's what happened. Sham Sundar Prabhu was discussing that when he was with Prabhupada, that one day um, they were really struggling to pay the rent and the bills in one of their centers. And they just didn't know what to do. They just didn't know what to do. But what Sham Sundar Prabhu said, Sham Sundar Prabhu is one of Prabhupada's servants, um, what Sham Sundar Prabhu said is that they just expected the magic of Krishna. Why? Because they were totally surrendered to Srila Prabhupada. So when they totally surrendered to Srila Prabhupada, they just expected magic to happen. They just expected expected magic to happen and one day they were walking to the temple and what happens they were walking and lots of hundred dollar bills started flying towards them from nowhere from nowhere just all these hundred dollar bills hundred dollar notes started flying towards them Krishna started and he said Krishna appeared to us in this way so that they could take that Lakshmi and pay for the rent so this is the magic of Krishna consciousness that if we are totally surrendered if we are um, ready to give ourselves to the spiritual master, to Srila Prabhupada, to ISKCON, which is Srila Prabhupada's movement, then we can expect Krishna's magic. We can expect Krishna's magic. And Krishna will happily orchestrate the magic in our lives, which he's doing already. Sometimes Krishna will come before us as a challenge. Sometimes we have to overcome some obstacles to become purified. And these challenges can last many, many years. Because along with our challenges, we can't always run. Because if we run from our challenges, sometimes we are running away from our duties and our responsibilities. So Krishna will come. He'll know we're stuck. He'll know we're stuck in a certain situation, maybe in a job or in a family, or uh, or a certain a certain um, a certain center. So, sometimes we're just stuck, but at the same time, we want to become Krishna conscious. We want our material situation to change. So, what's more important? The most important thing is approaching Krishna and saying to Krishna, "Oh, my Lord, how can I still serve you?" How can I serve you? How can I serve you in this situation? I'm so hurt by this person. I'm so shocked by that person. But you know, Krishna, I still want to serve you. And I'm receptive to how you want to appear in my life. And we'll see that the tests will keep coming. The tests will keep coming. But Krishna will never leave us. Krishna will never, ever leave us. Krishna will never let us go and make us face the tests alone. What Krishna will do is help us overcome our false ego. Krishna will make us realize it's not about me. Krishna will make us realize we are merely an instrument in Srila Prabhupada's movement. And we're, we're ready to be an instrument. We want to be an instrument. It's not that we need our name on a, on a flag and everyone parading our name. No, can we just be an instrument to spread Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement around the world and just be satisfied that we gave our life in that service, whether we're recognized or not. Who cares for some recognition? Actually, the most recognition we're going to get is when we're dead. So you won't even be there to hear it. The most nice things we hear about people is once they pass away, once they leave their body. So then the, the reality is we're not going to get to hear the most recognition we're ever going to get anyway. And what happens when we do get recognition? We'll always feel it's not enough. We'll always feel it's not enough. It's just never enough. If 10 people glorified you and one didn't, we'd wonder why that one person didn't. And the 10 people that did, it won't satisfy us. Because this is the nature of the material world. Dukalayam, ashashvatam. It's full of misery and, and happiness is very temporary. So this Dukalayam is there. And the only way to overcome this is to um, hear with rapt attention, scrutinizingly study the Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada says the difference between animality and humanity lies in this process only, this process of 
having receptive ears. A human being can hear properly, whereas an animal cannot. Prabhupada says this. So if we want to be different to an animal, hear properly. What does hear properly mean? Yes, when we attend a class, hear it and think about it, reflect on it and apply it to our lives. When we read something, hear it, reflect and apply. And that way we become a uh, person Bhagwat. <laughs> we have the book Bhagwat and then we have the person Bhagwat. The person Bhagwat is usually, the Maha Bhagwats are usually the devotees who see Krishna everywhere. And the way to see Krishna everywhere is by having um, Shastra Chakshus, having this, uh, this vision of the Shastra. Everything being about, everything we do, everything we hear, is relate, it, it can be relayed back to the scriptures. Okay, so I was sure maybe we can stop here um, and we can ask the devotees if they have any um, points they would like to raise. Um, anything, any corrections, comments, questions? Um, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much for emphasizing the hearing and then um, reflecting on it and then applying. Um, are there any questions or comments? Um, I have a comment, Bataji, that's okay. Yes, after. I just want to uh, thank Prabhuji for the wonderful class. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare um, Krishna. And I um, also wanted to uh, say just uh, uh, the very important thing you said about surrendering because um, just today I went through something and I ended up crying and, you know, crying to my mum, etc. And then um, and then um, she was saying the same thing, and um, I was also speaking to a very senior devotee, and he was saying the same thing, that, you know, if you surrender to Krishna, um, you mustn't even think that uh, the impossible is um, not going to happen, um, because uh, what you think uh, is difficult, and if challenges come your way, um, they are just as you said they are just um, um, a means of us to understand our false ego or um, perhaps just a, um, you know a way of learning uh, a learning curve for us um, and, and the fact that we should completely surrender to Krishna that is the main thing that we have to remember 24 7 so thank you very much for um, emphasizing the point again Hare Krishna thank you Panchali Mataji and thank you for sharing with us your difficult day but you seem to be doing well for someone who's had a difficult day so uh, that just shows how krishna is very receptive when we approach the devotees in our difficult times thank you panchali mati you're a good example because for someone who's been crying today you seem to be in jolly spirits <laughs> <laughs> Hare krishna. Her, her chanting must be very attentive <laughs> thank you for you know Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, I think Kamal Panchal Prabhuji has a question. Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, um, everyone. Hare Krishna, Kanchanamja Prabhu. Thank you so Hare much Krishna. for the uh, uh, wonderful class. I um, really liked your uh, points about how uh, when we're first in, uh, come to Krishna consciousness, it's the gross. And then in the, um, as we progress, we can still succumb to intoxication, illicit relationships, gambling, and meat eating in more subtle ways, uh, like intoxicated with praise, illicit relationships, mm. maybe more kind of talking excessively to the opposite sex. He's a handsome Prabhu or a Mataji, and subtle, that's subtle uh, mm. gambling, taking risk, and uh, the point you made about Prashada meeting in the wrong way. Um, and I really liked your points about hearing, especially about how to hear. So you, you mentioned kind of not just listening, reflecting, and um, it's important to then see how that applies. But um, my question was pertaining to um, how can we distinguish who to hear? Um, because uh, there's so many speakers online. Um, we have access now because of, of Zoom and YouTube and things like that. So many devotees giving class, and sometimes it can be uh, so many sanghas happening 
it can be overwhelming. So how um, could you uh, perhaps give some advice on how we can discriminate on um, who, to, who to hear from? Yeah, I think, thank you so much, Kamapu. I think if devotees tune in every Monday to this group, um, they'll be hearing a very good speaker um, who's very, very advanced in Krishna consciousness, <laughs> who's very, uh, who's very sincere, who's very talented in many different ways. So I think Monday night is the night, Prabhu, um, for devotees to to log in to this group uh, and hear from an esteemed personality. Um, because devotees who we want to hear from are devotees who are sincere. And maybe we need to make that, um, maybe we need to, um, yeah, just hear from sincere devotees. It doesn't necessarily mean they're on the, the platform of Prema, um, but actually devotees who we can connect to who are sincere. And that's the main thing, who are trying to live a sincere life in Krishna consciousness. Um, and actually, when we come to when we come to who to hear, yeah, sometimes we can get like this, like, okay, shall I go to class? Shall I not go to class? Who's, who's giving the talk? Is it this person or that person? But like Prabhupada's saying here, if we approach with receptive ears, there's always something that we can receive through receptive ears. And even if we get one thing from a class, one thing from a class, and we um, meditate on it and apply it to our lives, and imagine we did that every day, just get one thing from a class every day that we can then reflect on and apply. Our life would just transform very, very rapidly. Um, so I think the main thing I would say is um, choosing devotees who are sincere in their, in their practice of Krishna consciousness and also someone we can feel connected to. Someone we, when we hear from them, we feel that we can, um, yeah, we can hear them and take up something that they've said and, and apply it to our lives. I hope that's okay, Kamal Prabhu. Yeah, thanks so much, Prabhu. Very nice. Thank you, Prabhu. All right. So Monday night, please tune in. Monday every week. Very sincere speaker. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, any other question, Mother Rupa Mataji? No, I was just laughing the way... <laughs> The way Prabhuji gave answer to Kamala and Prabhu about Monday, so I was just laughing. Yeah, it's really very, very clever. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhuji, uh, Mataji, um, for that comment. And any other questions or comments? Yes, Hare, Hare Krishna. Um, yes, Thank you, Prabhuji. That was a really, really very nice session. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I wanted to ask you, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and taught us that, you know, um, the power of chanting, getting up early in the morning and chanting. Now in Canto 8 of Gajindra's story, the Lord has actually promised whoever gets up early at the end, you know, very early in the morning, and reads Gajindra's story of his prayers to the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, will definitely get an eternal position in, in Vindravan. So how does that compare if we are sort of struck with time? Which one do we follow? Do we try to follow both of them? Or can you please throw some light on this for me? Because I quite like this also about reading about Gajendra's uh, prayer of surrender to the Lord. Yeah, very nice question, uh, Pramila Mataji. Um, I think, you see, in the Bhagavatam is very nice that at the end of many different stories, the, 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 phala, the phala comes, you know, the, the fruit of what we can achieve by uh, what we can gain by reading the story or hearing the story. I, 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 fe I feel that if we read Gajendra's story e early in the morning every day and how Gajendra's prayers or surrender every day, you'll be so, we, no one will need to tell you to chant the holy name. The, the, the inspiration from within your heart will get you to chant the holy name. So I think it's great. If we find inspiration to be Krishna conscious early in the morning, even if it's through reading, wake up early and read. And what will happen next is we'll want to chant. So 
find it's very individual and unique but it's very important that we find our personal inspiration in krishna consciousness and we find that this is something that i love doing in my spiritual life and we wake up early to do what we love doing in our spiritual life all the other things will come naturally also so if we love to chant early in the morning wake up early and chant we'll feel like reading if we wake up early to read early in the morning wake up early to read then you'll feel like chanting because krishna consciousness is a relationship with krishna so when we are waking up early to connect with krishna Krishna, Krishna reciprocates and inspires us from within the heart what to do next. Is that okay, Pramila Mataji? Yes, thank you so much, Prabhuji, because I do feel that. I feel, well, okay, I'm really keen on reading Gajendra's story, uh, but I, I feel I follow that up during the day with my chanting, doing my chores and all of that, you know. <clears throat> Hopefully, Krishna will give me the strength and energy to get up a bit earlier still so that i can complete both of them i Amazing. hope so thank Amazing. you I think, I think he already is but yes thank you so much Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. arya govindas Ruji, and then vishaka mataji Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank, you. thank you for the wonderful class uh, on uh, on the importance of hearing and then uh, you know uh, like uh, and uh, reflecting on that and then uh, applying and also uh, when i was uh, hearing your class uh, like you were mentioning about the the effect of maya uh, on the on the gross level and the subtle level and uh, i've heard the uh, propad in his lectures uh, you know he mentions about two uh, two aspects of maya one is uh, avaranatmika shakti and then prakshek atmika um like that is one is one is the covering and then the covering effect of maya and then one is the 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 i mean the uh, prakshak atmika he says that you know uh, you know it it makes you uh, take you away from uh, a krishna so could you please elaborate on that or is it is it the same gross and subtle effect mm. Can you just repeat the last bit? Prabhupada said the two things, Prabhu, the Prakshak Atmika and? Avaranatmika, Prabhu. Avaranatmika and Prakshak Atmika. And what did he say about them? Uh, see, Avaranatmika, he, he says uh, that it is, it is the covering that, you know, it will, it will, it will think, make you think that, you know, what you're doing is correct. Mm -hmm. You might be, you might be doing wrong, mm -hmm. but, you know, it will, it will make you feel that you are doing it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you, you might feel that, you know, you might want to go to the temple at morning. Uh, you know, the, the next level is, you know, you might, you might want to, you, you are attracted to Krishna and then you want, you want to go early to the temple, get up mm -hmm. early in the morning. But it says uh, no. What is what is the use? You know, just uh, stay, stay. I mean, as you are mm. saying, sleeping. Mm. So these two, these two, uh, I mean, aspects of Maya keeps on keeps on, you know, uh, convincing us that you know, uh, one is you know when we are in the when we are in the material modes that you know when when we are materially affected, then we are uh, we are covered. Anyway, I mean, most most of the most of the people are covered. That you know they don't know the real identity of themselves. And then they are, they are really covered by Maya. And then Prakshik Katmika is the one which is, uh, which, you know, uh, affects probably devotees that, you know, it, when they, they want to do something, it says, you know, just it's okay, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's okay to not to do it. Mm. So it, 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 it basically Maya okay. wants the, only the cream to come yeah. to the higher levels. Okay, yeah, I understand. Now, thank you so much, Arya Govindapur. I, the thing I, I think the thing with Maya is Maya is very individual. And because Maya attacks us personally, why does Maya attack us personally? Maya attacks us personally because she's working for Krishna personally um, for, uh, to, to make sure we are all on track, like you said, to just kind of strengthen us. In one sense, it's to strengthen us. It said actually that Maya is a, um, a stumbling block for non-devotees but Maya is a stepping stone for devotees so for a non-devotee Maya is a stumbling block we're never going to get to Krishna because we're just in total illusion like just no understanding it's just totally eluded no no concept of God no concept of reincarnation no concept of super soul in the heart nothing and for some and for devotees Maya is a stepping stone 
because we become stronger because we take shelter of Krishna through our different tests and challenges. But what I really feel with devotees is that Maya, for someone, the same activity is Krishna, and for someone else, it's Maya. So I can give you an example. If I have, if I'm a single parent and I have a child and I want to go for Mangal Arti, but I have a child, if I leave the child at home and I go for Mangal Arti, that's Maya. I'm in total illusion, even though I'm going to Mangal Arti. Why? Because I've got a sleeping child at home who's now on their own. On their own. It's not, it's not, it's not normal, right? So, so, so now I'm giving a drastic example first, but then the example can become more and more subtle. So then what happens, we can understand sometimes we are trying to use Krishna just to escape our responsibilities in the material world. And that is Maya. Because the responsibilities we have has been given to us by Krishna to do them in a Krishna conscious way. So we hear the story of Raghunath Das Goswami. He wanted to leave his family and, um, and join Mahaprabhu. But um, Mahaprabhu said to him that, no, you stay with your family. And then after some time, he did leave the family. But at that time, Mahaprabhu said to him, no, you stay. Right now, you stay. So the thing is, there's a certain time when being Krishna consciousness means not being able to do direct service. And there's a certain time when being Krishna consciousness, being in strong Krishna consciousness means being able to do direct service. And if we follow the guidance of our seniors, this is when we understand what is Krishna and what is Maya. It's like someone in an abusive relationship. If they stay in that relationship because they think I've made a vow, but they're getting abused, then actually maybe they're not doing themselves any favors because they're getting abused. Now there's limits to how much um, one should take in, um, in any situation. But if we take the guidance of our seniors, we can understand because when we are in the situation ourselves, we just feel like escaping. We just feel like running to Krishna. Okay, I'll just join the temple. It may be a good idea. It might not be a good idea, but we need guidance of sincere devotees. Now, when we say take guidance, the guidance we need to have is of mature devotees who we have got a full understanding that they have got no personal agenda in their advice to us. So if we approach a devotee who is recruiting new uh, devotees for their project, and you can see that this devotee may not really care about us, but they're just, they're just recruiting whoever it is, just, just come, we need, we need people, you know, um, then maybe that person might not be, I'm not saying we, we, we know, but I'm just, I'm not saying these people, we know that we, we're in a, but any, what I'm trying to say is that if we can see this, that's not the right person to approach, because then what hap what's happening, we are approaching them because we know the answer they're going to give. We're approaching them because we know the answer they will give is, yes, just join up. Don't worry about your family. Don't worry about your responsibilities. Just come. So what's really important is we approach devotees who have our 110% genuine um, good wishes at heart. They want what's best for us. And approach maybe more than one mature devotee, maybe approach two or three mature devotees about our situation. And then we can come to, my, come to an understanding, what is Krishna and what is Maya? Where, where do I find Krishna in this and where am I entering into deeper illusion? Because some situations are so intricate. Someone in an abusive relationship who's got young children might think my dharma is to stay. But sometimes, some, that's, but actually that person, the best thing for that person might be give that person some space. Let them understand that they can't abuse you. Now, I'm not saying I don't. This is not a blanket answer for anyone in a difficult relationship. This is an answer, um, gives us an example, but this needs to be discussed in detail, intricately, with mature devotees who genuinely only care about our well-being. No other agenda. Nothing about themselves, nothing about um, anything except our own agenda. 
And this way, we can understand what is Krishna and what is Maya. I think that that's my understanding. Um, I hope that makes some sense, Arya Govinda Prabhu. Uh, and maybe if you have some own realizations on this, it will be nice to hear also, Prabhuji. Actually, we, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about myself, you know, sometimes we, we, we when we when we talk to seniors, uh, maybe we want to hear the answer what we want to hear. Mm. And then we, we want to, uh, we want to get that answer from him and then we want, uh, we want to follow that path. So maybe, you know, uh, like we are already, we have already decided what we want to do, but you know, yeah. we, <laughs> we, we don't want to, uh, actually our false ego is preventing us to uh, take their advice. So when then then we can keep on changing from another one devotee to another devotee, so that you know we get the right answer what is required for us. So yeah. uh, in, in ISKCON, we can always find the devotee who will give us the answer we want. We'll always find someone. It's possible, but actually what we forget is is Krishna seeing what you're doing. He can see actually we're being like Duryodhan. He can see we're actually trying to manipulate a situation. Um, but yeah, if you want to find a devotee to, to give you the answer you want, you can always find one. If you know there's someone who's really into um, someone who's really into uh, not 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 living in the temple full time and getting married, you'll find someone to approach. Okay, get married. If you want to find someone who will say to you, never get married, you'll find someone, and that person will say, never get married. Jay, you know, we can always find the devotee, but that's why it's important to not go with that mood. Because what happens, we're setting ourselves up for big disaster. You know, even at work, um, this is not even a Krishna conscious thing, but it's just something I noticed. And it's a, it's a similar situation, Prabhu. One, one student, she approached me and she said, tomorrow I have a family funeral, fam one family member's funeral. But I'm going to miss so much because I, I teach accounting. So a whole day of accounting is from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., uh, and you, we, there's a lot we go through in, the, in, in terms of material in one day. And she works for um, one of the big four. Um, and so they're under high pressure to pass their exam. If they don't pass their exam, they lose their job. So she approached me. She said, I, under, I have a family, a family member's funeral, but um, you don't think it's a good idea, do you, that I, don't, that, I, that I go to the funeral? So what she was trying to do was make me say, don't go to the funeral and you come to class. She was trying, and, and so she was the way she asked the question was basically trying to put it in my mouth that yeah, actually you shouldn't go to the funeral. So and then then I carried on. Then I said, actually, you know, I'd never tell someone not to go to a funeral. And she said, yeah, but you but you think it's not a good idea, right? So again, you think, and I said to her again, I would, I don't want you to regret in a few weeks' time, a few months' time when all this is settled that you look back and say, why didn't I go to this funeral? So I said, you have to make your own decision. But what I'm anyway that what I said is not part of the, the 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 topic we're discussing. What we're discussing is the mood of inquiry, and in the mood of if the mood of inquiry is I've already got the answer and I want I just want a devotee to rubber stamp it for me, give me the visa to do what the hell I want, then we'll find someone to give you the visa. But the pub, the problem is that that the stamp is not strong enough to take us to Goloka Vrindavan. You see, if we want the if we want the strong stamp, we have to be, have receptive ears and be ready to hear what we need to change. Once I went to a devotee, uh, one senior devotee, and I started complaining about my wife. I hope she, anyway, hopefully no one tells her. I started complaining about my wife and just telling him, you know, this happened, that happened. And he asked me what I did, and he said to me, actually, you were wrong there. I was like, oh, he's like, tomorrow you should take flowers for your wife and say sorry. I was like, oh my God, I wanted to complain and now I'm taking flowers, you know? So this is the thing. This is the thing. When we approach devotees, we should be ready to hear, have receptive ears. And with receptive ears, be ready to change. And this is how we are choosing Krishna over Maya. This is, this is how we are, what we're doing. And yeah, we can always find a devotee to... to to sanction what we want. I, I think I spent my first few years in Krishna consciousness doing this, just hopping from one to another. And then I realized actually, this isn't the way to practice spiritual life. Um, and sometimes it's, I remember when I wanted to take initiation, so in 2010, I wanted to take initiation and my initiation, so my Guru Maharaj was coming to London in, he came to London in July and my mentor, 
He said, I don't think you're quite ready. You should wait some time. And I was thinking, but Maharaj is coming. You know, I've been aspiring. And, you know, I was so upset, actually, because I really wanted to take, and especially, I just wanted to take in London when Maharaj was here. And then it was so funny that Maharaj came. He gave the initiations in July. I didn't get to take. I was so upset that I just couldn't even bear to be in London. So I went to Manchester for book distribution. Just so I, I needed to be out of the town even. I thought if I'm here, I'll have to go. And if I go, I'll see everyone, all my friends taking initiation. And I couldn't take. And I thought I'd get upset. So then I went to Manchester. Just to, I thought I'd go on book distribution with a few devotees. And then one week later, after Maharaj left, after my Guru Maharaj left London and he went off, then my mentor approached me and he said, actually, I think you're ready. Oh. Like one or two weeks later. And then and then, I, then in September, I was going to Ujjain and I, I took initiation in Ujjain. And I realized, actually, you know, that time in July, I could have easily found an authority to just stamp my initiation. Some, like my mentor was saying, maybe I think you need to wait, but someone else would have would have... I could have just got someone else to just sign. You need, you need someone to sign you off um, to approve your initiation. But actually, I realized that actually by listening to my mentor, the best thing happened. Because when I took initiation, I got so much special attention from my spiritual master because I went to Ujjain. And what I wanted with initiation, I got such a beautiful name. And, and, I, was, and, and I was thinking... If I took initiation in London when I wanted it, most of it was the euphoria that all the people who know me and they'll all say Jay when my name comes and all this was added, you know. So actually, I realized that if I had just found another authority to stamp and I did take initiation, it would not have been as special as it ended up being. You know, um, going to Ujjain the day after Radhashtami, it was special going for the Vyasa Puja, it was such a special experience. Um, and 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 I would have and and, I, and and no one can take that from me. That's in my heart, and no one can take that from me. And and I just and I just began to realize more and more and more when we have devotees that we can trust, devotees that we can trust, and the devotees who just care about our personal spiritual life. My mentor had very good reasons for telling me to wait. He had very good reasons. It wasn't that he was just saying. So, oh, Jay, Ajay, <laughs> Ajay Puru. So, so, so when, so because, and because he had so many good reasons for me to wait, I, I'm, I'm glad I listened. Because otherwise, what would have happened? I could have taken initiation, and my relationship with that devotee would not have been the same. Until this day, Sutapur Puru, he's my mentor. You know, he's still, he's still my Shiksha Guru. He's still someone who I, who I'm totally. Um, uh, totally, in one sense, um, um, surrender to, I could say, because he's, he's, he's for, 20, for, for 19 years, for 19 years, he's been um, a big part of my spiritual life ever since I met him. So I think, I think that, th I think the good thing for us is meeting devotees and honoring devotees who have, um, who have a special place for making sure that we make progress and they're just interested in our own progress i know i spoke a lot there ajay um, arya govind prabhu apologies but i, I felt quite um, inspired we by your comments we also we also had the the, the fortune of hearing from suta iskere suta prabhu and then yeah. it, was, it was really really wonderful and then i can't uh, it, we keep on repeating his classes again and again so yeah. thank you so much prabhu. Hare thank krishna. you prabhu Hare krishna Hare krishna Krishna, thank you very much uh, for that. Um, uh, I, there is another question uh, from uh, Vishaka Mataji, and but but I'd just like to uh, talk for a minute on today's experience uh, realization. Um, I had the same experience today. I said, okay, I did really because I had back to back meetings today, and I said, mm. I really don't want to go for this meeting. Maybe I should do uh, some rounds instead of going for this. I wanted to avoid that meeting. I really didn't want to chant the rounds, but mm. I said, I, I think I should chant my rounds ah. for this meeting. <laughs> and then I said, would Krishna really like that? I mean, mm. I, I think the answers are always there with you in your heart. And I said, no, this time is my time to go to the meeting and I have to do it and not overshadow it by saying, oh, I'll do this. I'll read something or yeah. I'll <laughs> 
uh, so I did go for my meeting and didn't chant the rounds that I wanted to just because I think Maya was playing it the other way around as well. Mm, it can happen. Sometimes for one person it's Krishna, for the other person it's Maya and it's the same thing. But it's, a diff it's different for a different person. So we have to be very careful. Thank you. <laughs> These things happen all the time to me, Kirtika Mataji. I'm glad you shared that. <laughs> Okay, uh, Vishaka Mataji, sorry, you, your hand is up since a long time. No, no, that's okay, Hare Krishna. It's just a little question. Uh, you know, uh, Premila Mataji mentioned about the prayers and chanting like in the morning. So my question is, you know, we do have lots of recommendations in Bhagavatam. Read these prayers and, this, and read that prayers. So, you know, sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming. What, what exactly should you really be doing? Um, uh, uh, you know, or you know, I understand that chanting is the only the main thing you should we, we should focus on. So you can just um, sort of uh, clarify a bit more on that. Yeah, uh, thank you, Vishaka Mataji. I think with this is we and something we just mentioned also is that we find our inspiration. You know, some devotees are really like Tulsi Maharani, and they're so dedicated to her. Some devotees really like. Um, uh, uh, Lord Nishingadev and they're really inspired by Lord Nishingadev and, you know different devotees have different unique um, likes and dislikes so similarly even when it comes to what should we be doing there's so many prayers in the Bhagavatam find the prayers that inspire us what is it that inspire what is it that we can connect to what prayers do we connect to um, uh, and if we find prayers that we connect to, then naturally um, we will feel inspired. And through these prayers, we'll feel like chanting. Through these prayers, we'll feel like chanting. So reciting the prayers of the Acharyas like Narutam Das Thakur or Bhakti no Thakur, they are so powerful. They are so, so powerful. We are reciting prayers from the Srimad Bhagavatam, so, so powerful. But like we said, we can't do everything. We, we can't physically manage everything. So we find our inspiration and go with that. Because spiritual life is about taste. So we have to follow the rules and regulations, but at the same time, we need to find the taste. So we follow the rules and regulations in terms of, um, we, we chant our 16 rounds, we follow the four regulative principles, um, and, then, and then we have to follow our inspiration. Where, which devotees should we associate with? Who inspires me? to devote myself to Krishna more? Which prayers inspire me to chant better? You know, these are, the, these are very personal. And this is why when we hear Krishna consciousness is the science of self-realization, part of self-realization is realizing what the self likes, <laughs> what the self has taste for. And when we realize what the self likes and has taste for, then we devote ourselves to that. So we can see that that if we devote ourselves, some some devotees are really just really like going on prasadam distribution, and they find a taste in that. Some devotees love going on book distribution; they find a taste. Some devotees love worshiping the archer vigraha, the deity at the temple, and they just immerse themselves. Whichever one, whichever type of taste of um, spiritual depth that we um, ab absorb ourselves in, Krishna will reciprocate accordingly. So even with the prayers. We can find the prayers that inspire us. Don't, don't, don't get caught up in, oh, I need to read this one. Oh, no, no, now I have to read this one. Oh, no, I do. And, then, and, then, and then it becomes, what can I read to achieve Krishna? But remember, it's not about being the achiever. It's about being the receiver. So, so look for the prayers that will allow you to receive Krishna in a wholehearted way, because that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for a loving, deep connection with Krishna. We're not looking to achieve Krishna. We, we're longing to receive Krishna in our hearts. Does that make sense, Vishaka Mataji? Yes, please. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, we've exhausted our time. Uh, are there any other questions or comments? Just a very quick uh, comment on that wonderful question and answer by Vishaka Mataji. I came across something recently, which was uh, I was hearing a class and someone asked the question, how to advance quickly? And an ancient uh, technique is by Bhakti Thakur, And even it's mentioned in the Brihad uh, Bhagavatam Rita, 
uh, Pariksit Maharaj even used to do this, was the verses that they really speak to us, um, write them down and uh, put them in a book somewhere uh, and reflect on them and then recite those verses regularly, the, the verses that really speak to us. So Bhaktin Thakur used to do this book, uh, Pariksit Maharaj, and, and that's one way which is recommended to to advance fast and is in line with what Kanchanamdri Prabhu just said. Uh, Brilliant. Thank you, Kamal Prabhu. Very nice. Find the verses that speak to us, write them down and meditate on them. Wherever we find Krishna, through the verses, through whatever we do, just find Krishna. Carve Krishna out of our life. Thank you, Kamal Prabhu. Thank you very much. Um, are, are there any other questions or comments? Are you going? Hare Krishna, yes. Hare Krishna Mataji. I just want to finally quickly. Uh, there was one quote by my uh, Guru Maharaj, which is Holiness Jayapata Kusam Maharaj. I would just like to read that, and uh, you know, uh, uh, he, he uh, I posted it on the, the Srimad Bhagavatam group also. It says uh, that uh, devotee can actually taste the real nectar of love of Krishna only when his energy is not being diverted anywhere else. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, it, 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 it was inspiring, so I just thought of sharing it. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank Hare you. Krishna. Are you going to Prabhu? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, we all read it today, and uh, so we have been meditating on it. Thank you very much for sending that quote. Okay, so we go to the closing of the session, since there are no more questions and comments, and we've exhausted our time. I hand over to Prahlad Prabhu. Prahlad Prabhu. Um, first, I would like to thank His Grace Kanchan Apche Das Prabhu for giving us this wonderful class um, concerning the Bhagavatam. Uh, so um, I'm very happy uh, that this was a very interactive session with uh, many people asking questions and of course uh, Kanchan Apche Prabhu answering them. Um, I always find it uh, beneficial whenever, even though I don't have a question, uh, but someone else will have a question, and then it will answer something that was never there, but is helpful in the future. So thank you, everyone, for making it inter as interactive as possible. And uh, thank you, Kanchanapcha Prabhu, for answering our questions and uh, taking some time out of probably your busy schedule and uh, taking us through the Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. uh, so on behalf of Iskon El Doret, uh, we would like to thank you. Uh, so I'd like to kindly request uh, all the devotees assembled, kindly unmute yourselves and let's chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra once for His Grace Kanchan Apchadas Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you,